Construction is a vast industry, expanding with world population and constantly repairing existing work. It's widely expected to double by 2030, growing by about 1 trillion US dollars every year. No wonder some estimates say that it counts for around 36% of global emissions. 3D printing in construction is gaining ground because it's fast and doesn't waste materials. With as much as 30% of the materials delivered to a building site ending up in landfill, the fact that 3D printing only uses what is required is a massive deal. It can also draw from locally available and recycled materials. Houses can be printed with incredible speed, simple shelters within hours, and all with far less waste and pollution from heavy machinery than traditional construction. But still, large-scale 3D printing needs crane and gantry systems, which are cumbersome to transport to a site. Imagine then if the 3D printing could be done instead by a swarm of nimble aerial robots. No heavy equipment to transport, no special structures to build, no scaffolding up to crazy heights, and no problems accessing remote locations. It sounds very science fiction, but this is actually becoming a reality with aerial additive manufacturing. It combines the teamwork of wasps with the precision of 3D manufacturing and the maneuverability of drones. The key to the breakthrough research that got the construction and robotics industry buzzing is the collaboration between multiple drones. One team builds layer by layer, and another quality controls the structure as it goes up, adjusting flight paths of the builders. Invented decades ago, 3D printing was originally called rapid prototyping. Its purpose was to avoid costly mistakes in manufacturing. But I'll bet the inventor had no idea that one day, everything from cars to body parts to space rockets to habitats for life on Mars would be 3D printed. 3D printing in construction uses a nozzle at the end of a robotic arm moving along a track. It squeezes out or extrudes concrete, polymers, or metal into layers, usually based on a computer-aided design file controlling where the material lands until a building is formed. Normal buildings aren't the only use case. Quickly developed shelters are important for those stranded or affected by storms and earthquakes. But traditional materials and equipment for even the most basic shelters often can't reach these disaster zones quickly enough, if at all. And if drones are already used to survey hard-to-reach places, work in risky environments and disaster zones, what if they could also build? When you think of how nimble and maneuverable drones are, and how precise and waste-free 3D printing is, the enormous potential for in-flight manufacturing is clear. But can it actually work in practice? In construction, accuracy is super important. With drones being so susceptible to aerial drift, how does aerial additive manufacturing get them to stay still enough for precise printing? In short, it doesn't. The drones move and the printing nozzle is steadied by a self-aligning, error-compensating robotic arm called a delta manipulator. This is a huge part of the intelligent system and lets the natural movements of the flying platform occur without compromising the destination of the material they are depositing. This is a gimbal, and what it did for video has strong parallels to what the Delta Manipulator system is doing for these 3D printing drones. The kinematics of these robotic arms is mesmerizing. Watch how the central point stays in the same position as the six-axis arm moves around. To give a demonstration of how this works, I've 3D printed the most basic robotic arm I could think of. And what you will see from this is that a core part of robotics is trigonometry. So before showing you that, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant, who have an awesome interactive course all about trigonometry. Brilliant lets you learn by doing and is the best way to help reach your goals for understanding maths, science, and engineering at your own pace. The fundamentals of some really interesting systems can seem very daunting, with Brilliant, they become accessible to everyone. They have thousands of lessons from the basics up to advanced levels, so soon you could be designing robots too. The lessons are fun to do and available in bite-sized sections so you can fit them around your busy schedule, whether you're a professional, student, or just lifetime learner. As well as fundamentals, there are loads of applied courses, like learning how the large language models of things like ChatGPT actually work, and what really makes a strong password. 
Whether it's for career progression or your own curiosity, sign up to Brilliant using my link brilliant.org slash Xeroth and you'll get 30 days free and the first 200 subscribers will get 20% off an annual subscription. Now let's go back to this simple demonstration. Kinematics is the study of the motion of mechanical points, bodies and systems. Forward kinematics is about finding out where the end of the arm will be given the lengths and angles of each joint, which are normally controlled by servo motors. The tricky part comes in when you try and do inverse kinematics. For this, you work out what angle each joint needs to be at to reach a predetermined point. Part of the issue here is that there are multiple ways an arm can reach the same point, such as elbow up and elbow down. All this gets even crazier when trying to move between two points. Now add a moving drone and more arms and you can see how impressive what this team has achieved really is. I'll leave more information about kinematics in the description, but that's enough for now as it's reminding me of a robotics exam I nearly failed at university. It may come as no surprise that the idea of drones working together to build things was inspired by nature. More specifically, how wasps and bees build their nests and hives, working collectively to form sizable structures made up of individual cells. Bees deposit soft wax in cylinders that dry into hexagons, whereas wasps are even more precise and create hexagonal cells out of layers of chewed, paper-like pulp. They both build without a plan, which is all down to stigmagy, which is not a different type of insect. Stigmagy is a mechanism of indirect coordination, often observed in social insects such as wasps and bees. In stigmagy, the trace left in the environment by an action stimulates the next one. Imagine you and some friends are making a big mural on a wall without deciding beforehand what it's going to look like. One of you starts by painting a small tree. Then, seeing that, the next one gets the idea to paint a sun in the sky. Inspired by both the tree and the sun, someone else decides to add a few birds flying around. In this scenario, your drawings or traces left on the wall guide what each of you decides to do next, even though nobody is directly telling anyone what to paint. This is stigmagy. A combination of this and an underlying blueprint guide the drone swarms. Professor Mirko Kovac, the aerial additive manufacturing project lead, goes as far as to call the bee the holy grail of robotics. Stigmagy is the essence of how teams of aerial additive manufacturing drones collectively build structures without direct coordination. According to University College London, this is the first time drones have ever been used like this to 3D print objects. Where to print is partially directed by a blueprint and partially from sensors picking up real-time environmental factors and the status of the build as it goes up. The software that governs the collective flight is called the Multi-Agent Mission Planning Framework. It's a real-time model predictive control scheme that enables the drones to adapt to their own movements in real time, accurately depositing materials and precisely shaping the emerging structure. Build drones deposit layers of materials according to a path planning framework, and scan drones follow up with quality control, assessing what's been done and determining the next steps for the build drones. What's really exciting is that during these test trials, two cylinders have actually been built in a lab a 2.05 meter tall, 72 layer cylinder made of rapid curing foam proved the ability to manufacture large scale geometry. They only stopped at two meters because of time constraints. The second cylinder was 18 centimeters high and made up of 28 layers of cement like material, proving that a structure with precise trajectory requirements could be made within a five millimeter or three sixteenths of an inch error margin which is in the range of the UK building regulations. A simulation showed a 15 strong drone fleet building a taller dome-like structure, 15 meters at the base. In this picture, the light painted work of each drone in a different color shows how the structure grew from individual actions within the autonomous collective system. 
The combination of precise control algorithms and real-time feedback is incredibly impressive and has made this all possible, but they've also created some novel materials. These materials are born out of necessity, rapidly drying foam and pseudo-plastic, cement-like polymers that are easily extruded by the nozzle but harden into layers at exactly the right rate were created. I can't see foam houses taking off anytime soon, but from what these researchers have already developed, I'm sure there'll be many more material breakthroughs to come. Although a foam house might not be for everyone, a foam shelter could actually be life-saving. The team is definitely ambitious, and even has plans for drones to create 3D printed Martian habitats. Other advantages of aerial additive manufacturing is that it has the potential to reduce errors, because going back to the original purpose of rapid prototyping, as long as the plan is correct, the print should come out perfectly. In theory anyway, sometimes my 3D printer does some very unexpected things. It's also highly scalable, as the size of the swarm can be increased and the tasks of each drone can be adapted to different print geometries. It's too early for solid figures, but considering this uses less materials and less infrastructure, I could definitely imagine this being cheaper in the right applications. There's obviously a lot of development needed before this system takes off. Layering within 5mm of the target is highly accurate for flying drones, but might not be good enough for projects demanding total precision. Before seeing what's next for this project, we need to consider the usual drone drawbacks. The regulatory, legal, privacy and insurance boundaries could keep this with its feet on the ground. And then there's weather constraints. Drones wouldn't be able to fly in heavy storms, but then again, printing in general would also have to stop. Some people also fear this could replace jobs, but 3D printing homes, for example, still needs human skills, just new ones required to run new systems. Aerial additive manufacturing still requires human supervision. Thinking about it in another way, when I used to do manual landscaping jobs, I was never angry when the digger would come along and help out. The biggest challenges though are the payload capacity and battery life. True to its pioneering spirit, the research team sees this as part of the next frontier for when, not if, the drone squadrons venture outdoors into real life. They're working on an automated replenishment system for materials and batteries, which would be very interesting. So what else is next for these 3D printing drones, bringing architects, material scientists and roboticists together? Their stated plan is to work with construction companies to refine the system and provide real repair and manufacturing capabilities. Looking back on the history of 3D printing, its uses have gone far beyond the original purposes. So autonomous drones 3D printing a house doesn't seem that far-fetched to me. With the need for houses and shelters in many parts of the world, the idea of being able to print them simply is very appealing. And with the need to address the root cause of climate change, building with fewer emissions and less waste is always a good thing. If you've watched my video on the solid carbon battery, you'll know how much energy goes into making concrete. So what's not to love about a new technology that could also bring us new materials? If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel as I think you'll like some of the other videos I make, like this one that I mentioned on solid carbon batteries. And if there's other subjects you'd like me to cover in another video, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.